Hello, this is Fred Kennedy, adjunct professor at Diablo Valley College in Pleasant Hill, California. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a Visual Studio 2010 or Visual Studio 2012 64-bit assembly language project. To work in 64 bits, you must have a system with a 64-bit CPU and a 64-bit operating system. You can create the following project using either the Express version of Visual Studio 2012 or the Professional version. You can also use the Professional version of Visual Studio 2010. I did not test it with the Express version of Visual Studio 2010. The Express version of Visual Studio 2012 is available as a free download from Microsoft. We are going to create the project as a Win32 console application. Click on File, New, Project, Expand Templates, Expand Visual C++, click on Win32, click on Win32 console application, and type the name of your project down here. The name can be anything you like. I'm just going to accept the default name. You can also put it in any directory you like, but I'm going to put it in this directory. If this box is checked, create directory for solution, uncheck it, and click OK. Then click on Application Settings, Empty Project, and Finish. Now we have to associate the project with assembly language. To do this, click on Project, Build Customizations, and check the MASM box, and then OK. Now we have to configure the product project for 64 bits. In the dialog box up here, click on this Win32 drop-down arrow, click on Configuration Manager. Under the Active Solution Platform, click on the drop-down arrow, on New, and select New Platform. We're going to select X64, copy settings from Win32, and leave this box checked, Create New project platforms. Click OK and then close. For some reason after creating a project for 64-bit programming the main function cannot be found by the linker so you must manually create the entry point as follows. Click on project, properties, expand configuration properties, Expand Linker, click on Advanced, at the very top here we see Entry Point. Click on the drop-down arrow, click on Edit, and type in the name of our entry point, which is the main function, all in lower case. Click OK, then OK. We have created our project for 64 bits. Now we need to add a source file. Click on Source Files under your Solution Explorer, under your project name, right click, add new item, expand Visual C++, and we want a CPP file, but you may have to click on Code, and then CPP file, and then down here in the dialog box, we'll put the name of our file, of our source file. So we can name it anything we want. I'm going to call it My Assembly. Now here's the important part. The extension has to be .asm, not CPP, so that this will be known as an assembly language file. You can take note of the directory, the file is going to go into, which in this case is our project directory. Click on Add, and now we are ready to begin typing our code. To be able to properly exit our program, we need the Windows exit process routine. And we can do the prototype right here.
Now, with a 64-bit program, it's different than if you had a 32-bit program. With a 32-bit program, you need a dot 386, 486 to designate the CPU. You need a dot model, but with 64-bit programming, you don't need to designate the CPU or the model. All you need is a code section and you can optionally have a data section. I will stick a data section in here and to it I'll add a variable. We'll just call it Q word one which will be a Q word and we'll initialize it some junk value And then the only section that we really need is our code section. And then we can start typing our main function, our main procedure. Now just to test out the 64-bit programming, we'll write some code to initialize the 64-bit register RAX. We'll just initialize it to 2C5 hex, H for hex. Now we're going to initialize RBX to QWORD1. Now we would like to exit properly to the operating system, so we need to call exit process. Before we call exit process, we need to configure the one parameter, the exit code, which will be zero. And we need to put it in RCX because Windows API functions under 64-bit programming pass parameters via the RCX, RDX, R8, and R9 registers rather than pushing them on the stack. So if there are four parameters, they will go into those registers. Exit process only has one parameter, which is going to be zero, so we can put that in the RCX register. Now we can call exit process. Now we just need to finish up our main function. And we need the end directive to indicate the end of our program. We want things to properly line up. After writing our code, we are ready to assemble or compile it and create the executable. To assemble it or compile it, hit and create the executable on one shot, hit F7. And down in the output window, we see that the build succeeded. We've created our executable. And now we are ready to start executing our program. We can execute it one line at a time by hitting F10 on the keyboard. And we can see by the yellow arrow that this line move RAX2C5H is ready to execute. Down below here we see our registers with their current values being displayed and you can display different windows during the debugging by clicking on debug windows and you have all different kinds of windows to display here. Right now registers is already being displayed so I don't have to click on it. In order to choose which window to display. Your program has to be running. I can execute this line of code by hitting F10 again and we'll see the RAX register populated with its 2C5H value. 
Uh, there it is. And now we can execute the next line of code, move RBX Q word one, which will populate RBX with the value of Q word one, which we define above here in the data section. All we have to do is hit F10 again, and there is the value in RBX. We are ready to exit our program by calling exit process. Before we do that, we must configure RCX with the parameter and we're going to configure it with zero, which indicates successful execution of our program. And then we can call exit process. So I step with F10, F10, and then F10 once again to exit our program. And down below here, we see that the program has exited with code zero. This concludes the demonstration of how to create a Visual Studio 64-bit assembly language project. I encourage you to watch one of my other videos, how to debug a 32-bit assembly language project. The process there for debugging will be the same in Visual Studio 2012 with 64-bit programming. Oh, one more item, be sure and comment your code. I'll leave you to comment the code that I created here. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you enjoy writing assembly language programs as much as I do.